Good morning. You joke. What's that? That's what I gotta say. You joke. You joke? What's that mean, sir? What's that mean? You joke? Am I a joke? No, just on the other side. That's okay. What do you have to say about it, sir? Going back, I'll say hi. That's right. Cool. I just got my keys. And then put your head in. There you go. Mike's got my keys. Okay, give him room, guys. Yeah, you got Go. Okay, I'm going to Thank street. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Good job. It's a shotgun mic. Hold on. Mr. Stampy, you have anything to say about the charges? Now you're yeah. a joke. I'm telling you this point. A joke? I can't really understand you, sir. Is it a joke or a... Sir, you have anything to say about these charges? How about you, sir? Can you make any statement to us about these charges? Now remember, tomorrow's Friday is the sun today. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If I may, I'd like to start out with the introduction of the uh, people assembled up here. I'm Bob Ryder, the special agent in charge of the Philadelphia Division of the FBI. To my far left is Ed Borden, the district attorney of Camden County. Uh, then Lynn Abraham, the district attorney here in Philadelphia County. You all know Mike Stiles, the United States attorney for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Next to Mike is Joel Friedman, chief of the strike force for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Of course, Commissioner Neal, Philadelphia Police Department, Attorney General Ernie Preate, the state of Pennsylvania. Barry Gross, Assistant United States Attorney with the Strike Force. Bob Courtney, uh, same position, and Captain John Meehan of the Pennsylvania State Police. I'd like to introduce, uh, first of all, Mr. Mike Stiles. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Good morning. We are announcing today the unsealing of a 12-count indictment that was returned yesterday, March 16th by a federal grand jury here in Philadelphia. The grand jury has indicted 24 people, among them John Stanford, for federal violations, including violations of the RICO statute during a period from October 1990 to the present. The defendants have been arrested in Philadelphia and in New Jersey. Uh, details of those arrests will be given to you um, later in this conference by... Uh... In Philadelphia today, what appears to be a gang rubout is the latest fallout from an organized crime trial, a court case featuring a mob assassin turned government informant and secret surveillance tapes with blood-curdling threats. Peter Van Sant has the Philadelphia story and the tapes. Bullets through the door, blood on the seat. Assassins in South Philadelphia this morning shot and killed Billy Vesey, the brother of a mob hitman who was supposed to testify today in the trial of Philly's alleged mob boss, John Stanfa. They knew where he was, uh, they went up to the car, multiple shots fired, and uh, they knew what their target was and they hit him. V.C. is the latest casualty in a Philadelphia mob war that is a throwback to Chicago of the 1930s. Since 1991, police say there have been nine gangland hits, killing five mobsters. Today, a third V.C. brother promised more bloodshed. One of my plans to find out who did it and kill them. John Vesey was scheduled to take the stand this morning to finger his former boss and seven of his associates. Vesey turned against John Stanfa after he was targeted for murder. The case against John Stanfa includes three murders, murder conspiracy, kidnapping, extortion, and loan sharking. The most damning evidence comes from Stanfa's own words, secretly tape recorded by the FBI, including this chilling threat spoken in Italian. Stanfa and cohort Sergio Battaglia were covertly videotaped entering a meeting where the FBI says they coolly discussed using acid to kill. Oh, 
Stanford's attorney today denied his client had anything to do with this morning's murder. Whoever did the killing has failed to intimidate the star witness. Sources say John Vesey plans to testify. Peter Van Sant, CBS News, Philadelphia. At the federal courthouse here, security was intense as one-time mob boss John Stanfa and seven mob associates were whisked into the courthouse for their long-awaited trial. It's been 18 months since Stanfa and the others were scooped up in an early morning raid and charged with racketeering. John Stanfa, like any other person in this country, is innocent and that the government has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty. In court, the unshaven Stanfa sat with his co-defendants as the jury selection process began. The racketeering charges against them include murder, kidnapping, conspiracy, and extortion. Federal prosecutors are refusing to comment for now, but defense attorneys are already attacking the government's case. Well, the government threw out a very big net and they pulled in a lot of people, including a lot of little fish, and they're lumping them together in their own categories that they feel are appropriate. And we'll see what the evidence shows and sort it out from there. The government plans to play hours of secretly recorded tapes of Stanfa and the others. There are video surveillance tapes made by the FBI, and at least five former mobsters turned government informants are likely to testify. Well, the government's going to tell you that uh, they have to bring in dirt in order to throw dirt at other people, and that's no way to put on a case. The jury in this case will not be sequestered, but it will be anonymous. First, prospective jurors, though, have to fill out this 45-page questionnaire, which runs the gamut from if they speak Italian to whether they've seen or read any movies or books about the Mafia. The questionnaire is extensive, from what bumper stickers do jurors have on their cars to their attitudes and feelings about a variety of topics. Defense attorneys say they can get a fair trial using this questionnaire. It would be helpful to know what, what their impressions are and whether or not they really believe that a mob exists. There were strong protests from family members today about the jail conditions for Stanfa and his co-defendants. This jury selection process could take all week. The trial is expected to last up to three months. In Center City, Dave Schratweiser, the 10 o'clock news. All right, everybody, what about, can we, uh, the killers are going to get deals, as you said in your closing. Well, we're obviously disappointed by the verdict. Um, it was a predictable verdict, one that uh, uh, my client and I predicted about a year ago. It was uh, an avalanche of evidence. We did our best to stand up in the face of it, but uh, the jury deliberated hard and long and came back to what I think is a fair verdict uh, from their perspective, and uh, you got to live with it. Client, have what about, can we, uh, the killers are going to get deals, as you said in your closing, and uh, your clients are going to spend probably the rest of their lives in jail. Uh, talk about that it'd be good well the tough thing to stomach with these kinds of prosecutions is that um, you know for the victims families uh, those that lost life to, to bargain with these kinds of deals is, is something that, that I quite frankly uh, uh, tried to show the jury is something that's uh, almost disgusting but from a government's perspective uh, this is how they can bring these prosecutions um, the tough part I think for everybody is is that um, you know, you've got to live with the aftermath and uh, now for the families of those uh, who were convicted they've got to live with the aftermath and that's the tough part, but uh, you pick yourself up and you, and you move on. You think the evidence was just insurmountable for you guys? It was insurmountable for me, uh, you know, between the combination of tapes, witnesses, and the fact that there was a surviving, surviving victim of a hit who actually testified against me. I'm familiar with no RICO prosecution in the past where you actually had a survivor get up on the witness stand and show two bullets in the back of his head. And it's a hard thing to overcome. Uh, we did our best to overcome it. We didn't prevail. Uh, now you got to turn the page. Prosecutors always say there's a message. Joel, can we uh, get a quick comment from you? Well, we're, we're, we're ple we are pleased with the verdict. We can't comment any further than that right now. We will comment further after the forfeiture verdict is rendered. Thank you very much, everyone. Michael, anything you want to comment on? No, it's a great victory, and we will have more to say after the forfeiture verdict. Thanks. Mike.